was so much to take away there and also to learn that I have been pronouncing Greta's name incorrectly for the last few months. So thank you, Theo. Um, our next speaker, uh, again, probably not a stranger to a lot of people here. Some people probably eat her fresh produce from the lovely stand in Octagon, at the Octagon Glossary. We have Aoife Riley, who's going to be speaking to us about organic and chem chemical free farming um, and her journey of that. Um, as, as some people might know, Aoife has a small farm not so far from here. There's five people working together, building a local food-based economy. So can we give it up for Aoife, please? Hi, how's it going? So, I brought my crops. Um, <laughs> Actually, most of you probably won't recognise me. You'll be so used to seeing Kieran or Joe or Damien on the market. I'm usually having a lie in, but today I'm working. So, um, my name's Aoife, and I'm one of five of us who work on the farm glossary in Hollymount. Um, so we have four people there full time and one part time. Um, we all do it because we're passionate about food. There's no other reason anyone works with us. Um, we estimate that we grow vegetables for about 150 families. It's hard to say, um, but we're fairly new on the scene. We're only four years old and um, only not even two years in Westport. So for the first two years when we started farming, we just put our heads down and we farmed and we put up polytunnels and we dug and we planted and we tried to figure out how to make a living from growing vegetables. And then two years ago, we started leaving the farm and it was pretty wonderful. We started going to conferences and we started being able to go deeper into learning what we were doing and uh, learning about soil, which is everything we're doing. Um, so the topic of my talk today is organic farming, um, a journey. And for us, it was like one hell of a journey. It was, it was an odyssey uh, that took us beyond anything we thought we knew about growing vegetables, but not even that, even about life. Um, we thought we were so important up here and our food choices are so important and everything was, and then we discovered a whole world beneath the ground and it's pretty big. So I'm a bit nervous, so this might take me a few minutes and then I'll get into the thing of it. It's fair with me. So firstly, we wanted to grow chemical free food for local people. That's why we started up. We had a dream. Um, and I'm sure most of you who came here are interested in healthy food and you probably don't want me to hear me hammering on about uh, chemical fertilizers and herbicides and pesticides, which would, would be the thing when you're talking about organic farming. Um, but then Joe asked me, did, did I think people knew the amounts of chemicals that were in their food? And I thought about it and I was like, I'm not actually too sure if people know how much is actually in there because I didn't. Not when we started off, it's only through learning about growing food that we learned the quantities. Um, it's rather frightening. But I'm not going to go there because we're going to stay positive. But I'm going to go here. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you can imagine that agricultural contaminants in human breast milk probably isn't the healthiest way to welcome a newborn to life. But that's just one example, a bit of a shocking example of where pesticide residues are turning up. Um, in places that you really don't want to think about. Um, so back when we started, we knew organic to be the healthiest food around. And we still know that to be the case because obviously that is the healthiest food around. There is no other options in the supermarkets, it's in the healthy section. Um, but now for us, organic is mainly a transparency thing. It's for us to show you that we don't grow using chemicals and our inspectors will back us up. Um, it costs us money to be organically certified and it's a lot of extra paperwork. Um, we farm biologically, um, which means we consider every aspect of how our farming actions impact the soil. Um, eating is a biological and chemical uh, act of nourishing our bodies to health. 
but we are experiencing chronic illness in epidemic proportions. Um, disorders of the brain, epilepsy, anxiety, depression, autism spectrum disorders, they're all connected or have been shown to be connected to the gut microbiome. Uh, studies of cancer patients have found commonality of the nutrient deficiencies of six main nutrients, vitamin D3, K2, B12, zinc, selenium, magnesium. Now, I'm not a doctor. This is just stuff I've read, okay? Um, but I do find it really interesting that our diets may be really lacking in nutrients and it may be having a major impact on our health. Because we do know that over the past several decades, the nutrient content, the micronutrients, vitamins and minerals of fresh fruit and vegetables have been decreasing gradually. And it's all due to how we farm, how they're grown. Um, soils are the absolute bedrock of our food. This is where all the nutrients come from, whether it's dairy, meat or vegetables. Um, if the trace elements are not accessible to the plant in the soil, our bodies cannot obtain what our cells need to prevent cancer and other metabolic disorders. So with the increase in chronic disease, healthcare costs, or should I say sick care costs, are set to cripple our economy. So you see examples of Russia vowing to becoming completely organic by 2025 and New Zealand in the process of banning nitrates in agriculture. Governments may just be starting to see the sense in reforming the food system. Anyway, here's the carrot. It's from our field, happens to be one of ours. An important thing we have learned in our odyssey of vegetable growing is that a carrot is not a carrot. As in, each individual carrot differs in nutritional value. Studies have shown from the US that there is such vast differences between different carrots based on this. Oh, there's so many factors involved that I don't even want to go there. But what I'm saying is carrots aren't always the same. Um, certain, one study has shown that there can be a 200 to one variation in polyphenols, 90 to one in antioxidants. That means that for one carrot, you might have to eat 200 other carrots to have the equivalent in nutritional value. It's a bit mental. This is my metaphor of 200 other carrots. Um, I got these Irish organic carrots in the supermarket. I had bought some a few weeks ago in Tesco and paid 59 cents for them. And I was shocked because I thought that doesn't work. Wholesale organic Irish carrots are one euro a kilo wholesale. They, that doesn't happen. So either they were imported and labeled as Irish which is legal if they've been two weeks in the country. I don't know, these ones may be of Irish origin actually. Um, but it's just something to look at, that your labels don't always tell you the truth. Um, farmer friends of ours wanted to wholesale carrots to supermarkets, but when they learned that for every 20 tons of carrots, eight tons would be rejected, they soon changed their mind. Um, that's a lot of waste, just for the carrots. Look, I should have opened this a bit more like this. So yes, I'm coming to the end of my talk now. Organic is better than chemical, yes. But we want to explain how it doesn't quite go far enough to ensure that the crops are healthy, to keep healthy, um, to keep our gut health in, in a really good way. Now I'm losing my roots. Um, and it can't either because the way organic farming is, it's, it's large scale and it's mechanical and it's yield based. And the whole model doesn't lend itself to looking after the soils. That's the beauty of small scale farming. You can do that. So for the future, we'd love to see more small scale farmers in Mayo, which has a population of 130,000. Did I mention we only feed 150 families? <laughs> There's a lot of scope for this. Um, a farmer near us once said, cheap food is a moral issue. If you're not paying for it, someone else is. And we'd add something else is and that will be the planet of our health. Thank you.